You know, people will do with their money what they want. I know it's an easy statement to make, particularly if you've got spare money to do what you want and buy what you want. But for some like me, the supermarket takes all of mine, and if there's any left over, well, then we go spend it at the petrol station. Hello, I'm Mike Bain from Christian Voice New Zealand, and believe it or not, I'm not going to get bogged down in an economics discussion about the current cost of living. Instead, I want to discuss what the future holds for all of us concerning money. Now, before I get into it, I've mentioned this before, but I just want to mention the words of Jesus as he spoke at Luke 21 about looking at how a fig tree, yeah, you know, when it sprouts leaves, there's an indication there's a, there's a change of season. Now, we're not talking about the return of Jesus yet, but money. So when I see the world's richest men like Warren Buffett, who's made his billions of dollars through the stock market, divesting his shares at a feverish place, uh, you have to think, hmm, he knows the stock market crash is near. Now, whether you've got money tied up in shares or even KiwiSaver, a looming economic crash is going to impact everyone. And if you think the bag of groceries at the supermarket is uh, light now, well, it'll get lighter still. But money changes everything for some people. But when money changes, it's bound to change our lives and the way we do life. Now, back in 1967, and I remember it well, New Zealand switched its currency from pounds, shillings and pence to dollars and cents. This transition to a decimal system was a, a major upheaval for people as they adjusted to the new currency. And believe me, it took some time understanding that, you know, one penny, which was about the size of a, a 50 cent piece, suddenly became one cent, which was about the size of a thumbnail. But anyway, on the horizon, <laughs> not too distant future, in fact, in the next 12 months of New Zealand's Reserve Bank is launching what it calls a trial as we go to a cashless society. Well, we're pretty much there now as we use digital means to pay for just about everything. Going cashless is not as scary as we think. Or... That's what they'd have you believe. And, and I've from time to time mentioned the hooks that are involved, but let's just reflect on what the risks are with a centralised bank digital currency system. Now, according to a report entitled The Central Bank Digital Currency uh, Data Use and Privacy Protection, published by the International Monetary Fund, any bank can use its CBDC system to collect all sorts of information about users, which in turn can be handed over to authorities to be used for mass surveillance and, well, possibly persecution. Now, recently I've spoken on New Zealand church leaders and overreaching the line between state and church, and already... I'm hearing the rumblings from those who oppose church. What a good reason to make a start on looking at changing the tax status of religious organisations, just as they've done with Family First. So let those in the pulpits hear the warning. Well, back to the CBDCs and how it works, is that every time a transaction is made, all sorts of private information is transferred and uploaded into the blockchain as proof. That information is then open game for government authorities and anyone else to exploit it for ulterior purposes. Now the IMF explains it this way in their, their paper. The CBDC, as a digital form of central bank money, may allow for a digital trail data to be collected and stored. Already, Already we're used to seeing our spending tat patterns being used by nasty things called algorithms, but what happens when those in control of the CBDC turn off the money supply? Just think about it. It was only a month or so when we had a computer outage causing mayhem around the world. No one could buy, ATM machines weren't working, aviation come to a halt, and there was about 24 hours of pandemonium. Now, the Tin Hat Conspiracy Brigade, they were up in arms. They were saying it's a trial to see how we would react. But authorities, they were quick to say that it was human error in a software, software upgrade. Uh, you know, I'm not entirely convinced this. We all know some things may be human error, and some things can be manipulated. Well, more than 98% of the world's central banks are preparing now to help unleash a new global cashless society once the time has come. All we need is one good economic disaster to push us over the edge. Remember what Warren Buffett's up to? And 
The general populace will be eager to sacrifice privacy for stability and convenience. Didn't we go through this just a couple of years ago? But you might be curious about the kind of data collected when using a central bank digital currency. Well, it includes the names and identities of both the payer and the payee. Now, additionally, it gathers transaction details for both parties, along with information about the merchant's name, location, and the category of spending. Yeah, it's familiar, eh? Credit card companies already collect and store this type of information about users and their transactions, but central banks aren't privy to it unless they pursue it with a warrant. But CBDCs, on the other hand, they're an open book for the money masters to track every single purchase that every user makes. So why is this all so important, I hear you ask? Well, centralised banking digital currency gives those who control the world to have more control on you. Now, last year, back in January 2023, I spoke about a thing called the Great Reset. Now, look, there's a term that we don't hear much about these days, but believe me, it's still in play. But back to what I was saying then and how centralised banking or a cashless society would work. The World Economic Forum wants to see governments have control and control its population by way of using a social credit system related to money. Let's go back to 2023 and see what I was saying back then. So if you want to know how government can use economic control to punish those who disagree with this policy, look no further than what has happened during a massive Freedom Convoy truckers protest in Canada in February last year. The Canadian Prime Minister Justin Trudeau sustained the debate on his decision to exercise emergency powers and banks were told to freeze the accounts of leaders of the convoy. Their names were given to them by the Royal Canadian Mounted Police. An online account of $10 million in donations raised for the truckers was frozen. After much criticism, the website with the funds announced that they would refund the donors. And when the names of those who contributed to the truckers were exposed, some were vilified. Imagine all currency locked away. No one will have to worry about their income. No one will have wealth. It'll all be controlled by the World Bank, who's controlled by the policies introduced by the World Economic Forum. Digitalization of currency, the end of money, is another piece of the puzzle of the end times when we'll see the world controlled by the Antichrist. The saying that he who controls the economy controls the world is true. And that, my friends, lies in our future, potentially our immediate future. Now, the reason all this is happening, in case you missed it, it's simple. He who controls the stream of money controls you. And why are they so wanting to control you and I? Well, the answer, oddly enough, lies in the Bible from the events found in the Garden of Eden, where it was suggested Adam and Eve could become like God to the building of the Tower of Babel. There they wanted to make a name for themselves to the Book of Thessalonians, when we read about a supposed godlike man who will take away the world's problems and declare himself to be God, and all the while being supported by a one-world government. And that's what we're talking about today. Centralised banking basically gives gives one world government a platform. So the fig tree is changing. It means we're not in for another season, but it will be one like we've never seen or experienced before. You know, Warren Buffett is no fool. He's just rich, and he's taking care of Warren Buffett. And I ask you to be the same, but stay awake to what is happening. Be aware of why these things are happening, but make sure that you're not caught unawares when it does. Hey, thanks for watching. Please leave your comments, share this video with others. Check out our website, christianvoicenewzealand.com. There's some suggestions there on how you can assist us with our ministry. And I just want to leave you with this thought from the book of Proverbs about money. And it comes from the Message Bible and, and it reads, A good name 
earned by honourable behaviour, godly wisdom, moral courage and personal integrity is more desirable than great riches and favour is better than silver and gold.